like button is free. If you want me to keep going, at least hit the like button. If you can't hit the cash app, I understand. But man, you can hit the like button. <laughs> you can do that much for me. That'd be nice. Thank you. So one of the craziest legends out there is the pig lady. Now the pig lady is a pig lady. <laughs> now oh, this is how it goes. So you know she was a beautiful girl, man, real beautiful girl, man. I'm talking about like the the talk of the town, man. You know this back in the day. So this like back in the in like fifties, somewhere around that forties, fifties. And this girl just I'm talking about beautiful, man. Drop dead gorgeous, boy. Now. She was a black girl. Now, the people of the town, you know, and I know it sounds a little weird or whatever, but you know how basically like, it was like, you know, back in these days, this was the time when like, you know, people married thinking, I don't want to say so they could come up, but it was like, if you saw like, you know, you had to have something going on. <laughs> like a daddy wasn't just going to pass his daughter on to anybody. You know, so yeah, that that ain't crazy, man. That's how it should be. You know, you shouldn't just you shouldn't just marry somebody just because blah blah blah. Like love is good, that's cool. <laughs> but you know, like with my daughters, man, you come to me, you better have something going on, all right? Like you know, if she say, "Daddy, I love him." Okay, all right, that's cool. I ain't gonna tell you don't love him. Well, what did he do for a living? You know, did he got a job? How much he making? Is he in school? Do he own a business? Now, if he don't. If he a broke Negro, then that's fine. We just gonna work him to see if he wanna build it up. And then once y'all get a little something together, I give you my blessing. That's it. So you can add a blessing just so, uh, you know, puts the work in or whatever. So and that's how it was back then. You had to have some. So the um, her daddy knew how beautiful she was, and her mama knew just you know her, family, her everybody knew like you know our daughter is a prize. So. You know, her daddy was real hard on who um who he let, you know, who let her talk to. So the bad side of this is it kinda got to a point to where it was it got to her head. Now ain't nothing wrong with uh knowing that you fine, knowing that you beautiful and they say, Man, she had, you know, just perfect curves and you know, and uh you know, perfect curves and, you know, big chest and all that, man. So, you know, she was just out of this world, man. So now, you know, nothing wrong with being confident. I love confidence in a woman. Like, you know, even if, like, you know, I'm talking about you. You remember growing up and it'd be like that big girl and she just had, like, you know, you got the Lizzo's and stuff. Now you see, and, uh, I think they kind of take it a little too far. <laughs> like, you know, you ain't got to have it. Like, I saw her with some pants with a hole cut in the back at a basketball game, man. So, I ain't talking about just being ignorant. But I'm just talking about just just good old confidence, knowing that you fine, knowing that you got your value that get you real far, you know. So, she, um, you know, she, um, she started, you know, kind of getting the feeling herself. Because, you know, her daddy was making her feel like, you know, she was just queen of the world. Now, daddy should do that for their daughter. But you also got to, you know, you got to teach to them. <laughs> you got to, hey, baby, you know, yeah, you the prize. But, you know, also you got to have some respect for the man, too. Now, a man that's going to treat you like a prize, he worthy of respect, too, now. You know, so it ain't just no one-way street. So... You know, she she'd go out courting and dating or whatever you want to call it with different guys. And um, you know, it just never would work out because the guy would eventually start seeing like, man, this girl thinks she you know, she think her stuff don't stay. Like, who you know, yeah, I know her, you fine and all, but you know, she ain't nobody that fine. <laughs> anywhere, you know, cause they taking her out, spending she making sure they spend big money and and uh, they going out to eat in neighborhoods where they ain't supposed ain't necessarily welcome, and buying her gifts, fur coats, and and nice purses and all kind of stuff. So, you know, now they, you know, after a while, the word kind of got out that you know, oh man, she's she too stuck up. So, folk quit messing with her. So now, uh, 
So now she, you know, she go to her pops and like, you know, hey, daddy, uh, you know, I ain't none of these guys working out. Now her daddy, you know, of course the, the guys wouldn't come to him and say like, hey, man, your daughter's stuck up. I don't want her. But, um, you know, the, the word was spreading around town. So now it happens. Uh, so now word got back to her pop. And uh, so when she came to him, he was kind of sitting on it. Like he had been hearing the rumors, but of course he had been denying it. But then when he got to talking to her, you know, he started saying, oh, yeah, dang, maybe, maybe she is a little too stuck up. Because people, you know, all these dates, and he knew how fine the daughter was and all the other, you know, people used to get married earlier these days. Because, um, you know, women, women wasn't allowed, I'm not going to say able, they wasn't allowed to, you know, to like, you know, a woman could get certain jobs, you know, but, you know, a black girl couldn't go get a job being a truck driver or a car a construction worker. Or, you know, they had to work certain jobs, man. Only certain things they could do. So, uh, all the other girls getting married off. They getting them husbands and stuff. And he like, dang, my daughter, most beautiful girl in town. <laughs> she can't, and she can't get a job no way. I mean, she can't get a guy no kind of way. So, um, you know, she got a little whatever little job. She had to get a little job doing something. So she went and started doing, you know, like maid work and that type of stuff. And um, a guy came to her. And this guy wasn't black. He was a different race. And he came to her and uh, told her he, she the most beautiful woman he ever seen. And he said, I work for a, uh, a production company. Now... When she heard that, you know, the word production, it didn't really, you know, to her, she didn't really understand what he was saying. So uh, he told her that he wanted to, you know, have her uh, come by and meet the people and all this stuff. And they might have some work for her. So, you know, she was just crazy excited because at the time, you know, she cleaning, you know, doing all, what's it called, like maid work, cleaning people's houses and you know, that's what her mama did, clean people's houses and cook for them and all that type of stuff. So, you know, she couldn't stand, you know, she felt like she was just, it was beneath her to have to do that because of, you know, how she looked. So, she uh, went to meet the guy, and when she got there, she realized by production company, he meant like movie production. Like, I guess when she heard, you know, either she didn't really understand what production meant, or she was thinking like, they produced some kind of like a warehouse producing some kind of whatever, you know, uh, some kind of warehouse factory type setup. But she saw it was actually like movie production. Now, the idea in TV was new to, I ain't gonna say all people in the 50s or the 40s. I'm telling you, know, whenever, I think TV came out in the 40s, I think. Maybe earlier than that, but I'm, I believe TV came out in the 40s. So, you know, to a lot of people, TV was new. You know, her family, they was broke. They ain't had no TV. They listened to the radio. That's how people was getting they listening to sports or, or, um, or watching, listening to movies, listening to radio. That's how they, you know, that's how they did it back then. So when she saw, you know, she knew what TVs was because they see him now, but, you know, but. So she was like, oh my God, I get the chance to be <laughs> on TV. So, you know, she, of course, she ain't had no agent. Like, that one, you know, if they was at that time, man, you got, you know, always remember, man, with these stories, it's a whole different time. Stuff was new to certain people. So, if somebody told me today they want me on TV, I know we got to have a contract. I know I need an agent. As people know this stuff and they still don't do it and they get jammed up. So they immediately like start taking pictures of her and, um, you know, just printing out these beautiful photos of her. And, you know, she had never really had, you know, you having your photo taken was a special thing back then. Like we literally take you know, you got some people taking, uh, what, hundreds of pictures a week, you know, like, people taking multiple pictures a day, like, you know, at this point, man, if you wanted your photo taken back in a day, you had to go and get it taken, 
you know, like, now if you was here the money and you was in the photography, whatever, but the average person, you know, you had to go and get your photo taken. That's why a lot of times when you see photos from back in the day, people are always like posing or sitting down or something, you know, it's not like a spur of the moment thing. It's very rare. You can't spur, spur of the moment people like photos. A lot of times, the only way that would happen was with a journalist. And that's where a lot of the photos I use, they come from like um, old newspapers and journalists who uh, would go out to get these photos. You know what I'm saying? So, with the pig lady, uh, she was, they was taking her photos, showing them, and they told her they was going to put her in a newspaper ad. Now, you know, her daddy read the newspaper every day. And she just thought about how crazy it would be. And she, everybody read the newspaper. How if people flipping through their papers, they see going to see her face in the paper. So she had a little ad for, um, she had a little ad for whatever in the papers, man. It wasn't no big front page thing, but, you know, just a little something, something. And um, they took it and they paid her, gave her more money and that one thing that she made the entire time she was at her, you know, other job, man. So she just, you know, freaking out, man. And she run home and um, she gave her daddy, she got that morning when the paper came, she grabbed the paper and made, she was waiting for the guy that he ain't even, you know, how the guy throw the paper, she caught the mother, <laughs> like she was ready. So she showed her pops, the, um, you know, had his, watching him flip through the paper. And uh, when he got to the page she was on, you know, he paused for a minute and said, man, that look just like you. <laughs> and that's when she showed him the money and uh, showed, you know, told him what happened, man. So, you know, of course, back then, you know, you made sure you look out for your parents, man. You know, you didn't just go and get no money. And, you know, be made sure that when you made money, you was making money to support the household. So um, the whole family started celebrating. You know, he told, daddy told mama to take off from work today. And, uh, you know, we're going to have a feast. We're going to cook. We're going to, you know, yeah, man, they had a good, you know, they had a good time, man. They celebrated. Now, the guy told her that, you know, the newspaper ad went so good that next we're going to have you, uh, we're going to have you uh, in a magazine. Now, the magazine, you know, newspapers is local, you know, that city or whatever. So now he's saying we finna put you in a magazine. You know, magazines is is I guess really worldwide. You know, you can magazine go all over the world. So uh, now it's time for the magazine shoot. So she you know was doing little newspaper ads and stuff like that. And they had her doing little you know different little stuff around and uh, you know taking photos and all that. So now when the magazine time come. You know, just like a, maybe a couple months later, she, um, you know, she was um, at this point, she was living pretty good, man. Like the family, they moved and got them a better, uh, got them a better house, you know, just in a few months, man. Because, you know, the pops, he was making decent money for uh, for black folk at that time. And, you know, the mama, she wasn't necessarily making decent money, but, you know, she, uh now that her daughter was making money, it freed up the mama to like get on some entrepreneur type stuff. So she got to like doing clothes and so before you know it, sewing, you know, she got to sewing and making clothes and, you know, little, little stuff like type that type of stuff. So before you know it, the 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 production company, the movie company, whatever you want to call them, they hired the mama to uh, you know, for they Costume and design and set design and and janitor janitorial work like she was just like a one woman army man keeping that place you know keeping the place running pretty smooth was cooking you know catering for the place like she did so they was uh, man they was living good so uh, she was dead to try to get a job <laughs> you know they ain't got no room for the black man but you know they got plenty of room for the black woman man. so she uh. So the pop get up in there, and he trying to get in there, but, you know, now he start kind of learning about, you know, Hollywood. He started trying to, you know, learn a little bit about how things go. And it wasn't easy, because, you know, 
you ain't finna get no info, no game for free. Ain't nobody finna teach you no game. You know, this is something you gotta learn through trial and error, or you just gotta be born in the people that's, you know, you can trust or something like that. But, you know, this ain't the type of thing where people gonna, you know, when it comes to making real money, people not finna just give you no game for free. It just is what it is. Now, you'll be blessed and things, uh, you know, things will work out in your favor and you'll learn something you didn't learn or didn't know, but, you know, that's that's far and in between, few and in between. So if it happened, be, be thankful for it because it don't happen too often. So, uh, then when the magazine shoot came, they wanted her to... Uh, you know, be a, be a little more, uh, be a little, show a little more skin than she uh, showed, you know, usually in the newspaper. They want her to, you know, this is, you know, this, they want her to show some skin. Now, this during the era where uh, it was like a, a, this like a women's era. Like, this is a time where, like, women was fighting for their rights and, and uh, you had, like, the hippie movement in the 60s and stuff. And, and the women was running around topless and stuff and all kind of that kind of stuff. So they uh they told her, you know, so she was um they asked what they wanted her to do. Now she knew that if her parents found out, they was gonna flip out. You know, they knew she was she knew she was gonna get a whoop. Like she was she knew she was gonna get a beating, man. Like so you know, they had never told her, like, hey, don't do that. But it was, you know, she just knew. You know, she knew what her parents stood for. You know, back then, everybody went to church. Everybody went to <laughs> Now, some people might have just went because they believed. And some people went because they didn't want to be the ones who didn't go to church. <laughs> you know, they didn't want to be the ones in the neighborhood who was at home on a Sunday morning. But everybody went to church. So, she already knew what her parents believed it in. She already knew what time it was. So, she told the guy, like, you know, so I really want to do this. I really, really, you know, I, I want you to make y'all, y'all done, done so much for me and my family, but I just can't do this because my, you know, my parents are going, going, you know, going to freaking kill me. So, They told her, don't worry about it, don't worry about it, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. We'll work, we'll, we'll work on something else. So she felt relieved and was happy the guy understood. And so he come back to her, you know, like a couple of days later and tell her, hey, I just talked to so-and-so and this and that. And they're telling me, if you don't do, if you don't do this, then we got to terminate your contract. And she like, dang, she said contract. So, uh, you know, she didn't know when she first got with them, like really what the contract, you know, and she didn't really know that she signed the contract. So he said, yeah, we have to terminate your contract. So she said, you know, you know, what do you mean contract? So he told her, you remember when you first came in, you know, you signed this, this uh, that paperwork. And she like, yeah, but uh, wasn't that just to um, confirm my employment. He said, yeah, technically, yeah, it's a contract. So she didn't read through it. You know, of course, she didn't know a contract could get you set up. All she saw was the money. That's all she seen. All she seen at the bottom. It told her how much money she was going to make. And her, and her name went right next to that. So she ain't thought about to read through it. And even if she would have read through it, she still would have signed. Because you ain't finna turn down that money and a chance to be a star. So, um, so yeah, he said, yeah, you know, you, you signed the contract and the contract states that you would do whatever the company asked you to do, you know, as long as it ain't something um, illegal, you know. But if the company asks you to do a reasonable thing for them and you deny it, the uh, contract terminate. So as far as the company was concerned, 
it's a very reasonable to ask a model to take some pictures in a swimsuit. Uh, and you know what? Was it a swimsuit? Nah, this one wasn't a swimsuit. The first one was just, uh, it was just like, you know, one of, but she was showing some cleavage and had a real high waist, a real high s skirt on, you know, showing her legs and stuff. So he said, yeah, this is a reasonable ask. You know, we ain't asking you to, you know, do nothing illegal. So, hey. Now, he told her, go home and think about it. Because she started, like, looking like she was finna cry and all that. So he said, you know, go home and think about it. And um, just get back with me tomorrow. So she went home. She got with her parents. She took them out to eat. Bought them a gift. And took them back home. And they all just sat on the couch. And they had a TV now. And they turned the TV on. And you know, at this time, boy, it was only like two or three channels or something, man. And they just sat there and watched it. And she said, Pop, do you think I could be on TV one day? And he said, baby, I know you're going to be on TV one day. And she said, I got a chance to get on TV. They told me all I got to do is just, you know, keep keep up the good work and do what they asked me and, and listen. Like you always taught me to do. He said, well, baby, if you know what you got to do, <laughs> then go and do what you got to do. And you will be on this television one day. You're making your parents so proud. Now, now at that, she just kind of took that as like a blessing, like a go-ahead. Now, she know that she was kind of deceptive because he ain't know what, you know, she was really getting at. But, you know, that's why also... <laughs> You gotta watch your words, cause he did tell her, you know, do what you gotta do to get on that TV. So, you know, now he ain't know what she was talking about, but hey, you know, sometimes you gotta watch what you be saying, cause we'll be looking to set you up. So, so she tell the guy the next day, I'll do it, and she do the shoot and go in the magazine. Now she didn't tell her parents about the magazine shoot, cause um, she ain't want them to see, and she hoped that nobody in town. You know, that really knew her parents. Because now she, they ain't staying in the old town they was in. They in a new town. So in this new town, her parents was, you know, them, them folk ain't mess with her parents. You know, they kept their head down and kept, you know, and they, they just did what they had to do. They knew they was lucky to even be there. So, you know, we ain't caused no trouble. Now, in the old town, of course, the people that found the magazine and saw her in the... They was running around telling everybody and this and that, but you know, the family was started kinda of getting kinda of bougie, man. So they didn't uh, you know, they didn't talk to the folk from the old town no more. Like, you know, that was it, man. They, they was done with them. <laughs> man, they you know, they on a whole nother level now. So uh So uh, once they get to um once the magazine she went good and her parents never found out, she did another. And on each one, they was asking her to just, just get a little bit more, a little bit more undressed. You know, a little bit, show a little more skin, you know, a little more provocative type pose. And, you know, it was just getting a little bit more every time, man. It's just getting worse and worse. Until finally, they asked her to do a big one. Uh, just a bikini. Now, she knew that at this point, she had got away with it so much that she didn't really, you know, she didn't think twice. You know, she didn't think twice, man. Like, okay, cool. Like, all you know, way back in the back of her mind, she knew that it probably wasn't right. But she did what, you know, she did what she did. Now, so I know some people listen to this. I'd be like, you know, hey, I'll do it, whatever. You know, hey, I'll put it like this. We all sit there and look at a woman in a bikini in a magazine or something or on the internet or whatever, but we don't want it to be our daughter. <laughs> so, you know, our, 
you know, I'm when I was a kid, man, and we had Jet Magazine and we had the uh, Centerfolds, man. Shit. You know, that was a big deal to us, boy. I don't know if y'all know, but in Jet Magazine, they had like the Jet Beauty of the Week. And she always be wearing a bikini, man. And, you know, like, man, but hey, do we want that to be our daughter? Some folk might be cool, but I know I don't want it to be mine. So that's what the thing is, you know, is, you know, you if you think it's okay, that's fine. But just understand that even if you think it's okay for you, would you want your daughter to do it? And if you ain't got no daughter, you might not understand. That's all. So, uh, you gotta respect that, right? <laughs> you gotta respect that. I, you know, if you, you know, you gotta respect that. But anyway, now, uh, they tell her that. We going to put you in a swimsuit. And after this, if this get over big, the next step is we're going to get you in a movie. Now, you know, she'd been seeing herself in the magazines. and uh, But she had never seen what she looked like on that moving camera. She seen what the still images looked like. But she had never seen what it looked like to be behind on that camera, man, with that moving video or whatever. So, you know, she told him, sir, I'm ready when you're ready. Whenever you need me to do it, you know, let me know. So, stories start getting dark. Stories start getting dark right here. So now she tell, uh, he tell her, let's go out. Now he take her out, and when she go out, they go to this like a a club, like a fancy club, you know, upscale type place. And when they get there, you know, there's a table or a booth or something like that. And they got a lot of old, (laughs) a lot of old men sitting around this table. And when they get there, um, you know, they got waitresses serving them and, you know, like they the they the number one table at the place. Like there's other people there, but you know they the table. That's that's the spot right there. You can tell. You know, all of, they getting everything they want and they getting it quick, fast, and with a smile, man. So they tell he tell her, come on and, and you know come on over, and he was gonna introduce her to everybody. So he came in, introduced her to you know everybody, and everybody shook her hand and and kissed her hand and stuff, and. Uh, you know, she was happy to meet him. You know, she I don't know they she knew they had money and stuff, and they looked like they was important. And you know, these is all white men, so they sitting here, you know, smiling and and, and chuckling with a, a young black girl. Man, so to us, she felt like she was somebody important. Now, you know, they had to sit down, and um, at this age, she wasn't old enough to drink. She was still about you know, 20 at this time, but, uh, they got her a drink, and, uh, you know, it was, she had a hard time drinking it, because she'd never done it before, but, you know, then they went and got her something light, and, uh, so, you know, something a little easier for her, and, now, she didn't know, but, yeah, it's going down easy, but <laughs> it ain't going down without a fight, so, yeah, it might be going down smooth now, but it's gonna get rough later, so, you know, she started getting all woozy and stuff, and they just keep on getting her drinking, keep her drinking, and uh, eventually, she won. You know, she passed out. Next day, she woke up in a hotel room, and uh, the guy who had originally brought her, he was uh, knocking at. The, you know, he was in the room and. Uh, you know, waking up and having her get dressed and stuff, and uh, she realized, you know, she was she was confused at first, of course, when she woke up and her head was hurt, but it ain't take her long to realize what happened. Now, this a look, let this be a look for y'all women out there. When it's too good to be true, and for the men too. When it's too good to be true, it's probably ain't true, all right? When somebody like, look, I do truck driving, right? And a guy called me and he say, man, I got 
I got a truck. I only charge, like, to rent his truck. He's like, I only want 500 a week. And I got a dedicated route for you that pay 8000 a week. I said, oh, yeah. Well, where the truck at? Yeah, it's over here and blah, blah, blah. And the uh, only thing I ask is, is, is that you uh, is that you do a, a $350 deposit. So basically, he trying to get me to uh, send him 350 so he can disappear. That's really it, because ain't no truck. You ain't got no truck. And if you did have a truck and you was only charging 500 a week, plus you was giving me a $8,000 a week route to run, whoever had the truck before me, why would they get a truck back? <laughs> like, if somebody offer you something like that, you ain't finna go, okay, man, I'm done. No. You will hire your brother or whoever to run that route. If you got to take a week off, you will hire somebody to run that truck for you. That's just all it is to it, man. You ain't going to, you know, that's just all it is to it. You're going to hire somebody to run that truck for you. You is not finna uh, turn that money. Look, if it was me, I'm going to run that truck. I'm gonna hire, and when weeks I can, I'm going to get somebody else to run it. Before I go get him the truck back. Heck no, man. So when it's too good to be true, it probably ain't true. You know, so hey, you know, hey, that's all I can say. If it's too good, <laughs> it probably ain't true. But anyway, man, this story is a little longer than uh so, you know, you don't realize how long the story is till you get to telling it. So uh let me see. I, I'm a, I might cut it right there. That's probably a good spot, man. That's probably good right there. I might go and cut it right there. So y'all let me know y'all want to hear some more of this.